So before I get today's banger kicked off, I've got some really freaking exciting news for you guys. Myself and favorite are hosting a contest right now. If any of you guys out there purchase a rig rod from this date until the end of May, you are automatically entered into a contest to get a chance to do some pond hopping with the sloth boy himself. So if you guys wanna enter this contest, check the link in the description below as to where you can pick one of these dirty birds up for yourself. These things are just sexy as all hell. Favorite and I are gonna be choosing one lucky winner at random who purchases a favorite phantom rig stick. So be sure to pick one of the rods up. We've only got a few left. It would mean the world to me and favorite. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Today, we're talking boats and wiener dogs but mostly boats behind me i've got 16 and a half feet of pure straight aluminum forged by the vikings this thing is an absolute beaut welcome to the channel my name is john b and this right here is my rig So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a full tour of my boat. And I wanna give you guys an inside look as what it's like to own a rig just like this one. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm gonna catch you guys up real quick. This is my 16 and a half foot aluminum low. It's a 2008. And on the back, we've got a 60 horsepower Mercury, which is also a 2008. I purchased this boat at the beginning of the year in February. I spent about $8,000 for it. Bought it on a Craigslist. Some guy just pulled up in a parking lot. I was like, hey, you wanna buy the boat? And I was like, sure. Why not? Gave him $8,000 cash. I think I got a little bit smoked, maybe spent a little bit too much for this boat. But the thing is, is I really wanted this exact boat. I wanted an aluminum boat that was no more than 18 foot, that had a V-Hull, and that had a bit of a past. And let me tell you, this boat has quite the past. So let's start with the bow of the slow. Up front, we've got a 80 pound thrust Minn Kota. Tarova. This is kind of an interesting troll motor for a couple of reasons, one of which it's not a motor guide and it doesn't suck as bad as a motor guide. It's something that you would normally see on the front of a walleye angler's boat. I happen to be a bass angler primarily, but I really like this motor for a couple of reasons, one of which it's powerful. If you have an 80 pound thrust trolling motor on a tin can boat that's 16 foot, this thing can seriously move, especially on high. I would say the primary reason as to why I bought this motor over any other motor out there is for this little button right here. This motor is so smart that if I'm on a good bite or if I break off and need to retie, I can press that button right there and it will keep my boat in place. It's essentially like putting your car in park. And I know a lot of other motors out there have it, but this is one of the less expensive Minn Kota models that have this feature. The other thing I like about this trolling motor is that it has that rocking feel, similar to how most foot pedal trolling motors um, act. I didn't want something that was completely flat where I would be like fatigued, but I also couldn't have like an elevated foot pedal too because I've got a compartment where that foot pedal should go and I can't really move that. So this is really nice. It still gives me that rocking feeling. It doesn't like wear me out and break my knees at the end of the day. It's not a bad trolling motor. I like it. It's fast. It's great on this boat. Uh, the shaft's a little too big, something you don't hear often, but it, it really is a little too big. I should have gotten the smaller shaft. I think it's a 60 inch shaft. It's better for bigger water, but it gets the job done. Yeah, not a bad trolling motor. Okay, moving on. In my last video, you guys got to see like the inside of my boat, all my compartments, but I didn't have anything in them, mainly because I just purchased the boat and I hadn't really got a chance to organize it. But now every compartment serves a pretty decent purpose. Up front is kind of like my technical boring stuff, like the whatever, John, we don't really want to see it, but I'm still going to go over it and bore the hell out of you. On the front compartment, we've got rope, for when I launch this boat by myself, and an extension cord for when I need to charge the battery, which you have to do pretty much every single night in case you didn't know that. It's not that exciting. I'm not gonna go over it too much, but you get the idea. Then over here, we have the live well that, might I add, is still freaking broken. Let's open this puppy up. Yep, still freaking broken, and it's got water in it. That's probably not a good idea. Um, and then next to that, we've got a live bait bucket, which I haven't removed or done anything with. This is originally supposed to be the rod locker, but since this is a 16 and a half foot boat, it really can't hold too many like big bass rods. So anything over like seven and a half feet, it can't really handle. I've turned this thing into a soft plastic department. It looks more like a soft plastics wasteland. It is so bad, look at this thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a mess, but you get the idea. Um, over here, we've got big craws, creature baits, um, small craws, big worms, miscellaneous worms, some some reels, which I need to I need to deal with that. Oh, also I've got this. This is uh, the rod that uh, I've got for Flair whenever he fishes in my boat. You know, something that he can handle and really kind of finesse with. 
you know the kid. He's just, God bless him. He's, he's got to have the small rods. Anyway, I'm just kidding, Flair. But not really. You suck at fishing. This is where the baked beans and bread is at for the most part. I'm usually digging in this compartment because I fish a lot of jigs and I fish a lot of craws. Um, over here, speaking of baked beans, I've got some spam and uh, some utensils just in case uh, I want to have some boat snacks. Because Lucky isn't just the only one on this rig that gets to eat boat snacks. Yep, Pops has got to eat too. As an Illinois angler, something I'm kind of new to is anglers packing, and it's a big thing here in Texas. It's kind of a good idea. When you're out in the wilderness all alone on the boat, you never know what you're going to cross paths with. I personally don't have a gun, but what I do have and what I do carry in my boat at all times is a uh, medium-sized katana. This thing will keep me protected if anyone tries to walk up on me, um, or if anything in that in that matter, uh, like a like a black bear. Because I now have learned that there are bears in Texas. So just keep in mind, having the proper defense mechanism on your rig is highly recommended. Doesn't matter if it's uh, a firearm, um, a crossbow, catapult. I just prefer to stay medieval and uh, stick with the the katana. It's, it's a pretty sharp sword. Anyway, no, I'm totally kidding. I don't want to get any calls from your mom saying that uh, John B is telling them to carry around a katana in their day fishing bag. Don't do that. It's not safe. I don't actually, well, actually I do carry this thing in my boat, but I don't actually use it. It's just a joke. All right, let's keep, uh, let's keep moving around. Check out some of the back compartments. All right, let's crack open this compartment right here. This is just next to my soft plastics, craws, worms, shaky head, stuff like that. Uh, this, in my opinion, is also kind of a bread and butter situation. I've got the vast majority of my tackle trays in here. That includes uh, shallow diving crankbaits, jigs, jerk baits, topwater frogs. You know, you get the idea. The majority of my baits that aren't soft plastics are in here. Um, I'm not gonna go over every single tackle tray and show you each and every single lure. I'm not gonna be like, all right, this is where I keep my uh, Norman's D22 crankbait. Like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna bore you to death and I'm also not gonna bore myself. So I'm just gonna pull out some of the main ones that I'm usually tooling around with when I'm out in the water. Uh, this one gets a lot of use. This is my flipping jig box. I've got jigs in here that are like a half ounce to a quarter ounce that I use for fishing around grass or brushes situations. Love this box. I use this tackle tray a ton too. This is my medium diving crankbait box. So wiggle warts, some Normans in there, some flat sided uh, striking baits, you know, just the juiciness. It, it really is one of my favorite things to do. Like medium diving crankbaiting. Is that, if that's even a thing, that sounds kind of weird. Not like deep diving or shallow diving, but like medium diving. I love like the, the baits that dive from seven to 10 feet. Those are my all time favorites. And then you got, you know, uh, fender baits in here, chatter baits, the goods, the goods. You get what I'm saying. Okay. Let's move to the one right next to me, which is right here. Next, we got something pretty boring for you guys. This is, well, actually this is kind of cool, I suppose. This is where I keep like kind of my miscellaneous big baits. If I ever see like a big fish out in the water, I know that sentence sounds kind of weird, but like if I ever see like a big muskie or if like stripers start popping off, I've got a bunch of big baits just for that occasion. Um, I've also got some big swim baits in here for largemouth too. I've got treble hooks. Treble hooks for replacing stingers on my crankbaits and jerkbaits. This is something I always recommend you guys carrying around, even if you're a bank angler. Having extra treble hooks can save the day. I can't tell you guys how many times I've been on the water and my hooks have bent and I need new hooks and I've got them because I carry around this little box right here. This is where I keep uh, some shaky heads. I'm a big shaky head guy. I love finesse fishing. It's one of my favorite things to do on earth. So I've got a box just dedicated towards my favorite shaky heads. Um, it's full and locked and loaded and ready to go. In here too, I've got some rod socks, some, um, got some free range gear in here. I've got a free range cup just in case I'm feeling thirsty or I need to fill my water bottle up. Um, spinnerbait box that doesn't have spinnerbaits in it. And that's about it. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's talk about graphs, electronics. Every angler loves talking about what kind of MacBook or Dell desktop they've got attached to their $80,000 boat. In this case, my graph costs more than my boat. This right here is a overpriced, very slow piece of equipment. I work on computers all the time and I'm always editing. And if something's slow, it just pisses me off. Let me tell you, this thing is slower than mole ass. I'm not a massive fan of this graph, but it does have its perks. Like it is touchscreen, which is pretty cool. It's the Hummingbird Solix 12S, I believe it is. I've got uh, the US and Canada Navionics chip in here, so I know where I'm going at all times. But I only know where I'm going after five minutes of being out in the water because that's how freaking long it takes this thing to boot up. I don't know if I just got a faulty uh, unit or what, but this thing is super freaking slow. I still like it though. It's it's not my favorite, but it works. The touchscreen is probably my favorite thing about this, and I just like playing with the, the knobs. It's got like a little joystick. It's almost like a PS, like old PS2 or something like that. Just lots of buttons. I like pressing buttons. I, I just like the way this thing looks on my boat. I never really use it. It's just looks cool, it makes me look like a badass. <laughs> also up front, we've got the best horn known to man. I don't care what anyone says, I don't care what boat you own or what boat your buddy owns. This is by far the best horn you will ever hear on any boat. Just listen to this. <laughs> 
I think I featured it in my last video, but I just it's too good not to be put in this one too. That's about all I have for up front. I'm only running one graph. Eventually I want to get a graph for up front and then maybe a second one because you know, you gotta have three graphs and you're fishing the trail. Up here I also keep my scale. Uh, I like the clamp scales because it's easier on the fish's jaw and uh, you're not having to poke a prong through their gills. That's always nice. I've also got this little tray up here. If I can get it out, which I actually can't. Oh, there we go. Some dip and dye in here, some sunscreen, some real lubricant, some lube, bait casting <laughs> lube. Uh, I've got split ring pliers in there as well. This is this this gets used a lot. And then under here, I've got some of my bigger tools. Like if I do happen to catch a big pike or you know a, a muskie, I've got this tool right here, which is super good. It gets deep down in the fish's mouth, and I don't have to like stick my hand in a row of um, razor blades, which is great. Yeah, and then I've got the control for my trolling motor, which is kind of cool. I think I failed to mention this, but you can control this thing remotely. I don't use this ever, but maybe I should start using it. Looks like a Blackberry, doesn't it? Hello? Yeah, mom, I'm coming home. No, no, I'm just with the boys. Yeah, no, we're getting Starbucks. All right, love you, mom. I said, love you, mom. All right, bye. All right, I gotta go, bye. All right, I gotta go, seriously, bye. My Blackberry's running out of battery. You get the idea. All right. Now let's talk rods. My rods. So early in this video I mentioned that my rod locker, I keep all of my soft plastics. Now you're probably wondering, if the soft plastics are in the rod locker, where are the rods? Are the rods in the soft plastic locker? How does, that, how does that work? No, you'd be wrong. In fact, I've got the world's janky assistant for my rods. And if you guys have a better solution, please let me know because I'm looking for a much needed alternative to keeping my rods at the bottom of my deck pretty much at all time. So this is where I keep my rods all 94 of them. I've got a lot of rods, but I keep my rods here because the rod locker is too small and there's no other place to put them. So what I've done is I put them under the driver's well and they're diagonal so they won't get bent. Um, it's not a terrible system. It's not like the rods are getting damaged, but it's not the greatest. And when I'm traveling, I hook the bungee under the seat and then I come over here and I hook this so that none of those rods are flying up and I'm not missing any sticks along a hefty road trip. Far from ideal, but it's functional and this boat is all about functionality. This is not a Ferrari. This is a used 1996 Honda Accord with 200,000 miles on it. That's exactly what this boat is. So I've got to, I've got to treat it like one and that's just how it works, you know? It's not the best, but it, it, it gets the job done. So ideas much needed. Sure, this boat is 10 years old, going on 11. It may have some dents, some nicks here and there. The motor may need a new lower unit in a few months. It's a little dirty, but it's it's my boat. That's what I love about it. It's, I can call this thing my rig. I can take this thing wherever, whenever. I don't care if this thing can't get up to 80 miles per hour. I don't care if this thing's not 22 feet and has 30 compartments. What's important to me is that it works, it runs, and I can catch fish from it. I have absolutely zero regrets. <laughs> after purchasing this thing. Yeah, I know, thank you. And I'm super excited to continue to make more fishing memories out of this rig right here. My biggest advice to you guys if you're interested in purchasing a boat is get something that you want. Don't get something that your buddy has. Don't try to one-up your friend or, or try to be like the guys in the Elite Sears Tour. Get something that works and that you like. It's gotta fit your persona. And this boat, in my opinion, really fits who I am. It's a little rough around the edges, but man, does it run and it can catch fish and it gets the job done. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Again, be sure to enter that contest. I would be so stoked to get the opportunity to fish with one of you guys out there. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.